Hey everyone, so it is officially fall now and harvest season. So as you know, we didn't do a garden this year because of little baby George coming. It made it very hard to be able to do weeding and prepping the garden. But we have great neighbors who are taking care of us and they grew up the old fashioned way where if you didn't can it, you didn't have it for the winter. So Gail, my wonderful neighbor, brought me um, three boxes of tomatoes and it's probably about a bushel tomatoes maybe. So I am canning them. We went shopping last week and for our own finances we like to pay with cash and I have to stick to the budget when we're at the store or else I'm just not going to have enough. So I had tomato juice in my hand at five dollars um, a container and it's probably about a two quart container. Just so much money. Not organic or anything. Just um, It was the store brand. So I had talked to her about um, recipes for tomato juice because it's cheaper to buy tomatoes and juice them. And we have a Jacqueline juicer. We don't have a cold press juicer, but um, it's just not in the budget. So um, we also have a very small kitchen and a very full basement. So I don't really need another appliance. I am making homemade tomato juice today and I am canning tomatoes. So this is the start of it. I've got some wonderful pictures. I've got some wonderful pictures of the tomatoes. I just think it's always so pretty, especially on the channel page. But she gave me three boxes of these. Um, so one of the tricks is, of course you want to wash them. It looks like she's already done a good job washing them anyway, but I am uh, using this tool. And it is a core, and you can use this for strawberries or tomatoes. It's really great. Here, it shows up better over here away from the sun. Um, but you want to cut off your blossom end and this is the end that gets pollinated so that that doesn't end up in your um, canned tomatoes. But if you're juicing them, it doesn't matter. And then you just cut them into quarters. If they're a very large tomato or a very small tomato, I'll either cut them in half or in like six. So I'm actually using my bread serrated knife. It is a really good sharp knife for me because obviously it doesn't get used as much as like meat knives um, and my other vegetable knives. So we're getting at this. I've got a five gallon food grade bucket here. I am wearing gloves because I have very, very bad skin for dermatitis and eczema um, on my hands. Soap bothers me, acid bothers me. So I, if you're doing a lot of these, I recommend wearing gloves whether you have skin conditions or not. Um, we are making some cookies right now too to kind of go along with it. The guys are doing farm work. Bethy was helping to eat cookies. And she's doing some drawing. And I've got some boys just hanging out here on the computers. Hi. Being buds today. Yep. He's playing Diner Dash, I'm playing Roblox. And they were playing Roblox together on the same server. And Trey is out in the combine with Grandpa. So, Dad was just outside selling some hay. And he was going over to go check on the combining. Um, they are combining hay for alfalfa seed. So hopefully we'll be able to we're get a separate video of that in here. So thanks for watching, everybody. I'll show you this as it goes along. So I decided that I would just cut all the tomatoes into sixes. And if you have a helper, a lot of times you can pass the cut tomato over to the side and use one of these scraping spatulas for picking them up. But it's going along really well. Um, Jack's doing a little bit of filming for me right now because I've got my gloves on and I'm cutting the tomatoes. But go ahead and give him a shot, Jack, of inside of the bucket to show how we've come along. So far this is almost one box of tomatoes. And um, things are a little slow with baby, so I just want to have them all pre-cut. I can do hot pack or cold pack with the, with the tomatoes. And if you do cold pack you still have to have hot jars and hot pack kills any bacteria and then you have less chance of spoilage so I like to do hot pack for that reason to kind of speed things up sometimes you can do cold pack or in a hot kitchen um, we've been having these temperatures in the 90s but we have air conditioning so it doesn't really matter um, I do cut out any bad spots or soft spots in the tomatoes and everything that I'm cutting off I save for scraps 
and the chickens and the pigs will eat it all up. Uh, they're also getting the stemmed cores that I pulled out. We have, if you've seen, a new ceiling fan. So show baby. I pulled baby's little bassinet in here so that he can see me and I talk to him. And he's looking up at the ceiling fan, totally entertained. All of my babies like lights and ceiling fans. So after I get these all caught up, we will uh, get the jars ready and just do this one step at a time as we can. So baby's not really allowing me to get done what I need to do. Um, some days end up like that. And I decided to go ahead and do cold pack on the tomatoes, the um, hot water that you have to put over it. Either way, I'm still having a second pot on the stove, just to show you. So I've got some water starting to boil here. This is getting hot. Um, you do need either citric acid or lemon juice. So I am using um, citric acid. I didn't want to go to the grocery store and I had this on hand. Um, so I am, this is a half a teaspoon per quart or a quarter of a teaspoon for a pint. And it says it does 77 quarts of tomatoes. So that should be no problem at all where um, I'm entirely out. So I've got, I ended up with almost two five gallon buckets. So I don't know how many quarts this will end up being, but uh, I almost was going to have to stick these in the freezer because I realized I was out of the tomato juice before this. And if you don't do that, um, basically the citric acid keeps it food safe. Um, I made a video a long time ago of some stew, uh, cabbage soup that I didn't pressure can. So I've got some empty jars in here getting hot. I've got lids and bands here. And these are all washed and clean. And then I will fill the sink to get the second batch um, hot, hot, because you have to have them hot or they will crack. And I have got some really great old jars that I probably don't want to use, but I use them anyway. Um, I've never seen one like this. It's a Glenshaw mason jar. Never ever heard of that. I have another one that says Liberty on it and it's got a picture of the Liberty Bell. But I've got these really old um, mason jars and you can tell the difference because the new ones um, are a thinner glass. And these are the ones that give me the trouble the most. The old ones don't. The old ones all came from my mom. And they have been around and around and around. They have been used so many times. So we are getting into the canning here. The boys are taking a break and having some, we're totally cheating, we're having ravioli. I was gonna make them spaghetti, but with all that, you just about need a second stove. If you have an outdoor 220 and had a um, extra two burner stove, like an apartment stove, it would be great for canning. I want to eventually do that for my sugar shack so that I can do my maple syrup finishing and bottling without bringing it into the house. Yeah, the baby's hanging out right now. He's being happy. Hi. Hi. He just listens. We took a break and we went out and collected some seeds. Yeah. I've been doing that seed saving about every day. Oh, achoo. Achoo. Yeah. That's right. Bessie's being my buddy. Except for that she spilled pistachio nuts all over my living room floor. It's a mess. That's right. Oh, look at this. I know this isn't really one of the family vlogs, but all these pistachios. A whole bag of pistachios everywhere. She filled up her little table full. She's been watching PBS all day. So that's the start of that. So one thing I wanted to say about canning is if you are using um, lids and bands from your mason jars that you have in storage or that somebody has given you or you've bought and used, these old ones that are starting to rust and corrode 
you can end up losing an entire batch of food because it won't seal properly because of the rust causing gaps. Um, you definitely want to make sure that you spend a little bit of money. You're putting all the work and effort and the money into your everything, your gardening. Make sure you're heating your lids and bands in a pot before you are sealing them. That heats up that wax ring. You can see the shininess. And I save them to reuse for crafts. So this rusty one, they have great crafts on making like pumpkins and stuff out of your old chip jars. And even uh, hanging lanterns and uh, things like that for your old damaged lids and bands. Um, Ball is offering um, different deals on their website. So I'll put a link in the description to that for you to save a little bit of money. But I'm using the Ball Citric Acid Ball Lids and Bands and Ball Mason Jars. Um, there are some other brands. I know I saw a generic brand at um, Menards one day and everyone gave reviews that they weren't sealing and they had things go bad on the shelves. So don't use those. So I am filling my jars now and I wanted to show you I have my citric acid in the bottom, half a teaspoon, and I am just doing this with my hand and the canning funnel. You want to keep the tops of your lids clean, not exactly that way, um, and I always wipe them clean when I'm done. A thing about canning that you need to know is you want as much air out of the container as possible. Uh, if you have too much air space, your jars will end up having lots of floating instead of filled. So, oh, Bethy just screamed and woke up the baby. Um, when I add my water, after I've got them all filled up, we're doing real good. We're almost through the first bucket, and that was just um, the first seven jars there. Thank you, Murdoch. You're a good brother. So I push down on them a little bit, and then after I have them filled with water, they actually have a bubble remover, but you can just use a butter knife. Um, a wood skewer works too, but a butter knife works fine. And I push from the outside of the jar, um, in different spots. Usually I do it in about three different spots. Um, you get some evaporation from your kettle every time. So I would add a little more water to each batch. I've got my water boiling here again. It's just about to boil. So I turn it off in between to save electricity. If you've heard me mention before, I think we have the most, electric most expensive electricity anywhere. And one of these days, I've looked into different ways of doing it, but we haven't gotten gotten off the grid yet. So I was pushed down, and I want to have um, everything underwater so that your stuff on the top doesn't turn funny colors. Um, it can oxidize if it's not immersed. And this is pure tomato juice down in here, so I'll save that and can that separately. Um, or you can heat it and add it to your jars. So I'm just gonna go through here and get these all topped off and then add water to them. So this is how you get your air bubbles out. You want a half an inch of head space. And if you look in like this ball book of preserving, this is where most of my recipes come from. I get a lot online also, but it will tell you, um, see like page, and this is a slightly older version. I've had this one for a little bit um, about the head space. It has great information, um, old recipes that have been tried and tried and tested plenty. Um, 
it's impossible. I get all my cookbooks all wet and everything. But this is a good guide here. It tells you where on your rim your headspace is. So if you go to the top of the shoulders of the jar, then you are at one inch. And then when you get to the ring, it's a half inch and a quarter inch to the top ring. So if you look at like your spirals here, so this is gonna be your one inch, this is gonna be your half, and this is gonna be your quarter inch. So right there. So I'm taking a break from my canning. It is 45 minutes in the hot water bath um, to process your jars. And if you want to use a pressure canner, it's only 25 minutes, so you use a little le less electricity. But in our case, it takes um, anywhere from 45 minutes to an hour for the temperature to drop. Um, the temperature has to drop to release uh, slowly the pressure. You can't take the pressure release valve off. So I prefer to do the water bath canner when I can. Um, if you're doing multiple, multiple batches, then it's just um, too slow of a process waiting for that hot water bath to cool down. Or the If you're doing large batches, then it just takes too long for that pressure canner to uh, slowly release um, the temperature and the pressure to move on to the next batch it looks like I am going to be ending up with at least um, four batches or close to four batches which is seven jars a piece for my canner most canners are seven jars um, I am doing the quarts so it is 45 minutes for the quart size and then with the pressure canner is 25 um, when I go back in the house I can double check the time for you but I think it was uh, like five minutes more for a quart than it was for a pint um, so we're just hanging out outside waiting for that timer to go off so we figure we have about a half an hour to just kind of get out in the sunshine so I've got the raspberry patch behind me and the grapes um, we snacked on some raspberries and we're just sitting here in the shade the temperature has dropped quite a bit because we're getting into the evening hours now I uh, have made good progress on the tomatoes and you know you can do this I had in the beginning when I was slicing the tomatoes I had the baby in the front pack and I had him in the bassinet in the kitchen and we're just uh, taking breaks so that we can have our snacks and our meals and get him fed um, you can see he's kind of <laughs> having some milk right now and it's just better for me to keep him on a full belly when I'm trying to work we let him feed on demand so sometimes it's just feed him in between jobs and it keeps the house peaceful. So we're going to finish up our little break here and just enjoy the leaves are crunching underneath us. It was the first um, week of fall and it's hot as heck but the leaves are still falling and crunchy and it's nice to hear. Being out in the country is just one of the best things. Matthew's brother had filled up her swimming pool for her the other day. They said they just couldn't resist it when they were playing in the sprinkler. They had it all covered with a tarp and then left it off. So she jumped in it just now to decide to clean the leaves out. She's having a great time. Yeah. Clothes and all, just having fun. So here we are at the very end of the day. I ended up with 23 jars. I still have two left in the canner and at the very bottom I ended up with two quarts of tomato juice. So I'll save those for making goulash or chili. Um, so they, they went right in with the canner too because that is a 45 minute process and you can choose to um, strain the seeds out if you like. Some people say that the seeds can um, change the flavor but 
I've never really had canned tomatoes without seeds. So it's all going into the mix and it's good for your fiber and your guts anyway. So I left it in. That's just my opinion about it. So this is my tomato canning everybody. Thanks for watching.